Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together as we enter into this sanctuary. Let's sing praises. Praises to our God. Join me. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Klein United Methodist Church. We are glad you are with us. We are glad that those of you who are watching from home are with us this morning. We're glad that those of you who are in the sanctuary have chosen to worship here with us today. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have just a couple of quick announcements. The first one is that our God box today is for visual compassion. Those of you who might be visiting with us, our God box is an extra offering that we take up during our first song. Um, each week we choose a different ministry or community uh, organization to bless with this gift. Visual compassion is run by our own uh, member, Joey Dalek, and he... Uh, this year, he is an, an optometrist, has agreed to help us in the food pantry, get the kids ready for school this year by doing eye exams and um, helping us get affordable eyewear glasses for them. So we're really grateful to him. Be generous to him because he's helping us too. And my second announcement... My second announcement is about teacher appreciation. I need the ushers. I need at least the usher that is messing with her um, name tag. Okay, I, I was, this is Nancy Kocheck, everybody. She's really mad at me right now, I guarantee you. Nancy Kocheck. This week and last week have been Teacher Appreciation Week at the public schools. Today we are honoring and, and appreciating our teachers in the children's wing, people who have, who have loved on and taught our children over the years. Nancy Kocheck has been a ch Sunday school teacher with the children for 42 years. <laughs> we are, that's right, we are grateful. We are grateful. <laughs> and there she goes, and that's that. All right, that's that. We are grateful to all of our teachers, to everyone who sews into the lives of children. We are grateful for the way they love on, the way they mother these children. And now let's worship. For our opening hymn, please stand.
right, as you remain standing, first of all, <clears throat> let me get my shout out to those of you who are virtual and in the building. Happy Mother's Day. We love you and we appreciate you. Remain standing now and help me in our call to worship. Jesus said, come. To the motherless and the childless, he said, come. Jesus offers us a love that knows no conditions and knows no limits. Amen. Now the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, maker of heaven and earth, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, the third day he rose, he ascended into heaven. From thence he shall come to judge. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Welcome to Klein United Methodist Church. Please take a moment to sign in with the QR code on the back of the pew, or if you're watching online, please use the link on the page to let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. If you're new around here, we encourage you to fill out the visitor card in the pew and stop by our Welcome Center in the main lobby to find out more about our mission and ministries here at Klein. We also have a virtual Welcome Center located on our website with all the same materials and information that you can get right here in the building. Sign up now for the next senior adult trip to see the Astros play the Rockies on June 26th. Contact Kermit or Ruthie Gideon to snag a seat with the group. Fifth grade clap out will be May 19th. We would love for our church family to line outside the sanctuary and in the main building lobbies upstairs and downstairs at 10 a.m. to clap out our fifth graders as they officially graduate from the children's wing to student ministries. Are you ready for VBS? It's almost here. Here's how you can help us dive deep this summer in preparation for the big week. VBS Prep Day will be after church on May 19th from 12 to 3 p.m. We will have lunch in the main building lobby before getting to work. We have a job for everyone, so check out the list and sign up on the website. Even kids can help. The nursery will be open for our children aged 3 and under. The VBS volunteer meeting will be May 26th at 12 p.m. in room 308. Pick up your shirt and find out exactly how the week will run. The nursery will be open for any children during the meeting. VBS Setup Day will be May 31st from 9 to 2 p.m. at the latest. We need lots of help transforming the church to an undersea adventure. Sign up on the website. You don't have to be there the whole time. Every little bit helps. Want to help with VBS in a different way? Our VBS volunteers need yummy snacks to keep them diving deep all week long. Sign up on the website. All donations are due by June 2nd. May is Safe Sanctuary Month. Don't forget to head to KleinUMC.org slash sanctuary to get started with your certification. All volunteers helping with children, youth, and elderly adults need to be certified every single year. Make sure to get certified by May 31st. If you have any questions about your certification, please contact the church office. Don't forget to sign up for Musical Arts Camp. It's June 17th through 21st this year, not in July like normal, so don't delay. Spots are going quickly and volunteers are needed as well. Have a great week and happy Mother's Day.
Hi friends, happy Mother's Day. I've read this definition to you before, but I'm gonna repeat myself today because I think it is so important for you to remember. The word mother can be used as a noun to describe a person, but it's also a verb. To mother means to bring up a person with care and affection. I love the verb definition of mother so much because it broadens who we consider in our lives as mothers. Anyone can mother, including God. In fact, the Bible tells us that the reason we are able to love or bring up with care and affection is because God first loved us. He first mothers us, which helps us mother others. How do we know that? 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says, Dear friends, let us one love one another because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become a child of God and knows God. That means that God loves us. He brings us up with care and affection. And because of that, we are able to do the same. Think about the people in your life who have mothered you. The love, care, and affection they have poured into you has come from God. Now, think about how you treat others. Do you love and care about them? If so, you're mothering, just like God, and it's His love pouring out of you. Today is a day to celebrate the love, care, and affection that God has surrounded you with. And remember that you can love and care others and care for others because of Him too. See you next week. Amen. I don't have to preach now. She just, she said it. It's done. Friends, I invite you now into a time of prayer. I invite you now to lift up to God all of those joys and celebrations that you're experiencing this week. And also lift up to God all of those things that are heavy in your life. The sorrows, the concerns, the griefs. Take just a moment. Gracious and merciful God, we are so grateful to be yours. God, we are grateful for the opportunity to come together to worship you, to remember who we are and why we are. God, on this day where the world people around us are celebrating Mother's Day, help us to see with your eyes the way that many people in our lives have mothered us. Whether they're our own biological or adoptive or fostering mothers, parents, aunts, uncles, grandmothers and grandfathers have all loved on us with an affectionate raising up and building up. God, I ask that you put hands of healing and hope on those who are experiencing Mother's Day with grief in their hearts for a mother lost or a child lost. God, I ask you to put special hands of healing on those who wish desperately to be mothers and have been unable to make that happen in their lives. God, I ask that you move among us, guiding our hearts, guiding our eyes, guiding our words, that we might notice those among us who are in need of a mothering kind of love an unconditional, caring, nurturing word or deed in their lives. And God, make us brave enough and strong enough to step into that role where it's needed, to be your hands and feet, your voice of love. God, I also ask that you put hands of healing 
on the Bryant family today as they have lost their son. They have lost their son this week. Let them know that they are loved. Help us to minister to them and to lift them up and embrace them in this time. God, keep us, keep us mindful of who we are called to be, loving you and loving each and every person who comes into our life. God, remind us of all this as we pray the prayer your Son, our Savior, taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we worship together.
take your seats. What a wonderful message. God is in charge and he's always working on us. The ushers are going to come now as we prepare to give. You know the ways. Scan the QR code that's in front of you. Text. Good old fashioned check. Hard earned cash. Whatever is your pleasure, I just need you to know what a blessing it is that you take generosity so seriously because it affords us the opportunity to do great ministry. Let's pray together. God, thank you for entrusting with us resources that we use to do ministry here. Thank you for those who give. Thank you for the way you bless the gifts. Do it again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The ushers will serve you.
Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. The scripture is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. The word of God for the people of God. So that might be a name that's not familiar to many of you or a person who's not familiar to many of you. That's my mother. That was my mother. I think that we have an equal chance that they intended the cuckoo clock to be in there or that they assumed that Allison and Wayne would edit it out. (laughs) They were mistaken if that's what they were hoping for. For those who, I mean, you know, those of us who have clocks at our house that chime, did they even hear it? Did they even notice it? I don't know. I love it. I love it. All right, so I've got these stupid glasses with me today. So here's a secret that I'm going to tell you. Some of you know this. When I first started preaching, it's a scary thing to stand up here and preach, right? Even now I get nervous before I preach. I cannot read these. No clue what this says without glasses, right? And so when I first started preaching, I did not have, quote unquote, real glasses. I just had my readers. Well, when I put these on, these are readers. I can't see your faces. All right. So I used to hide behind them because it was so much more comfortable to just have no idea whether you were frowning at me, whether you were smiling. And so I used them, you know, to protect myself. Well, since then, I've gotten, you know, transition glasses so I can see both far and close at the same time. I don't know where they are. I have no idea where they are today. So I've got these. I'm going to take them on and off. I'm going to mess with them. It's going to be awkward, and I apologize. Marshall does an impression of me that looks a lot like this. It might end up like that by the end of this so that I can see you and my notes at the same time. We'll have to see how it goes. I apologize in advance. All right, so let's remember what the first words of this sermon are. All right, see, on and off. Already, already. It's going to be awful, y'all. It's just going to be awful. It's the way it is. I like to preach Mother's Day. And the reason I like to preach Mother's Day is because I am uncomfortable with, I have a complicated relationship with Mother's Day. I went through infertility. Those of you who have gone through infertility know that there was a time in my life where I dreaded Mother's Day, hated Mother's Day right? Because it was, it was a reminder of all that I wanted and couldn't seem to have in my life. And we also know that in our culture, even in the 21st century, there's an expectation of women that they want to be mothers, that they will be mothers. All of that, right, gets wrapped up into that. I used to hate Mother's Day. So eventually we adopted And I learned that parenting, that mothering has absolutely nothing to do with biology. That changed also my understanding and relationship with what it is to be a mother and what Mother's Day means. I went on to have three children. Two of them are biological. I mean, there's a story there too, right? And now I've got this fourth child coming into my life, my, my son's girlfriend, and I think she's here to stay. We'll see. I love her. It's great. My dread of Mother's Day for me was temporary, and I know how fortunate that I am that it was temporary because I had a mother who's willing, right, to do scripture reading for me and surprise me with that. I was surrounded by women who loved me and sewed into my life in meaningful ways. 
I have been fortunate enough not to have been left wanting children and not being able to have them. It was temporary for me. My mother, we see, is still living. I have all of these Mother's Day blessings that I am very aware of. But I am also extremely aware of those among us who are perhaps still going through infertility or are perhaps tired of explaining on Mother's Day why they continue to not. They don't want children. It's not part of their plan. It's not part of who they want to be. I know that there are those among us who were not raised by women or men who sowed into our lives in positive, meaningful ways. Maybe even sowed into our lives in traumatizing and hurtful ways. I know that there are those among us who are experiencing grief, remembering a mother whom they've lost, whether it was recently or long ago, that grief is still there. And I can't imagine what Mother's Day is like for people who've lost children. That, that has to be a grief-filled and difficult way to celebrate and experience Mother's Day. And so I like to preach on Mother's Day because I don't want to ignore the complexity and the realities of the very different situations that we have. There are those among us who are mothering, who are mothers, but don't look like what society says mothers should look like. Whether it's their gender, their age, their relationship to the child, and yet they are mothering those children and should be celebrated as such. So last year, I preached Mother's Day, and I used Psalm 139, and I talked about how God offers us that first experience of, that first taste of a mothering kind of love. I looked up, this is my definition from last year, what it is that it is a, a mothering love, that verb form of the word like Megan talked about. And God's love for us meets all of those definitions. To mother is to protect, to tend, to nurture, to care for, to cherish, to love. This year I looked up uh, definitions again and found one that, I, that made me laugh, and it is to look after someone kindly and protectively, sometimes excessively so. <laughs> sometimes excessively so. And I laughed at that, but then I thought about the way that God loves us, and God loves us excessively. Yeah. This passage today that I chose reminds us of that, reminds us that love is from God, that God is love at God's very core, at God's center. That's, that's how we can best understand who God is. And since we are born of God, we are born of love. Born of a love that mothers us, protects and nurtures, cares for and cherishes, sometimes excessively so. God loved us so much and recognized our human needs so much. Recognized our need to understand what love really means. God also understands our limitations in understanding and experience. And so God sent Jesus to us so that we might experience a tangible, physical example of this kind of mothering love, a love that protects and nurtures, a love that's unconditional, so unconditional that even when it became parent, apparent that loving us, that caring for us, that nurturing us would cause him to be persecuted, would cause him to be humiliated, challenged, abused, and killed. Jesus chooses to love us in a mothering kind of love right through that, in spite of what we would do in response to that kind of excessive love. As Christians, we are called to love God and love others. 
love God and love others. And I think the idea of loving God can feel easier sometimes because it's this other, far away, distant kind of love, right? And God is predictable in many ways. God is dependable and trustworthy. And that's easy to love, isn't it? It is easy to look at the life and ministry of Jesus and feel and, and want to show love. It's easy to look at the resurrection and want to show love. And so maybe we do that with prayer and worship and we do that with our voices in song. And we do that in ministry and we do that in study. But that's only a part of what we're called to do. Because as we're called to love God, right alongside of that is the call to love others, right? And because others are simply an extension of God. Creation is just an extension of God. We are called to love God. We are called to love others because it's all connected. It's all one. And we have that very physical example, tangible, seeable example of what it means to love in this verb form, mothering form of the word, right? Prayer is great. Worship is great. So all of these things are important. The feeling of love is important. But Jesus didn't just come and show us what it means to pray and worship, to study and to feel that feeling, that kind of hard to describe, undefinable love. Instead, God shows us through Jesus, through Jesus's stories, through Jesus's ministry, what love, the mothering kind of love that God offers us is supposed to look like. We see that kind of love acted out as the father runs out to the prodigal with arms open in an unconditional, forgiving, grace-filled, embarrassing almost kind of love. We are shown what that kind of love looks like when the Samaritan stops what he's doing, changes course, cares for with resources, time, and energy, this broken man on the side of the road who, frankly, if the tables were turned, probably wouldn't have done the same for the Samaritan. That's a mothering kind of love. We see examples of this love when Jesus, when Jesus goes and sits with and pulls to him Levi and Zacchaeus, the woman at the well and others, when society says, not them, God's mothering kind of love through Jesus says, yes, them. We see this kind of mothering love when Jesus is confronted by hard hearts, by angry bitterness, and the men want to stone a woman who has broken their law. And Jesus offers those men a mothering kind of love by encouraging them to soften their hearts and to think about what they're doing and who they are. And then also, of course, cares for the woman in that moment. There are so many examples of the ways that Jesus shows us this kind of love. And I want to remind you that often it's not, it's not where we initially think our attention is supposed to be directed. This week I was thinking about the feeding of the thousands, right? And we think about how Jesus is offering them love, but in that moment, as his disciples balk at the cost of, of feeding those many, of the impossibility of how are we going to do that, Jesus offers his disciples a mothering kind of love by showing them another way, another attitude, another approach to what they are called, who they are called to be. And that's who we are called to be. And it seems like I'm just listing example after example, but I, and I am, but I'm doing that because it's important that you hear that this isn't something that's mentioned once or twice 
in the gospel and not again. It's over and over and over and over in every one of Jesus' stories, in every one of his encounters and ministries. And oftentimes, the people he is nurturing and mothering and caring for are the people who feel like they least need it. Don't doubt that Jesus is offering a mothering kind of love even to the Pharisees when they challenge him and say to him, you're breaking our rules, you're messing with what we do during worship, this isn't right. And lovingly and kindly, Jesus looks at them and in front of them so that they see and know and hopefully come to be raised up in this kind of love, heals the sick and makes whole the broken. Jesus in that moment is mothering not just those who need the healing and the physical wholeness, but the ones whose hearts are broken and whose understanding is broken. All of them need this mothering kind of love. And here's the deal, God doesn't exclude any of them. Jesus doesn't exclude any of them. It's a both and always, both and. We haven't said that in here in a while, but it's part of who we are. It's a both and. And I also want to speak to those of you who, who are drawn to that Old Testament, right? Because this isn't just a gospel message either. It's a whole story message from the very beginning. God has loved us with this mothering kind of love. We see it in so many of the stories, and I could go and I'll make him mad. We could talk about David, we could talk about Abraham. That's a mothering kind of love to put up with that nonsense over and over and over again. Let me tell you what, but God does, God does. It's the kind of love that Esau shows to Jacob that Esau shows to Jacob. Think about that story and think about how much love and forgiveness Jacob deserves in that moment. And yet, that's what Esau meets him with out on that plane. It's a mothering kind of love, an unconditional, nurturing kind of love. It's the kind of love that Ruth shows Naomi long after her obligation to Naomi has been satisfied. It's the kind of love that we see in God telling the Israelites that they are to treat the travelers, the immigrants, the strangers, and the poor among them as part of their family. Treat them the same. Treat them with a mothering kind of love. That in itself, to tell somebody, to teach somebody how to love, is an act of love in and of itself. It's from the very beginning. Those of you who have taken any kind of study with me have probably heard how much I go back to the moment at the very beginning. God has created this humanity, these people, and loved them, given them everything they could possibly need. But in God's excessive love, God also gives them the freedom to either accept and live the way God has, has hoped and intended and created them to be, or not. And what do they choose? They choose and not. They choose themselves. They choose a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more power. They choose to believe that they know better than God does, that they can choose another way. And God's mothering kind of love is a love that recognizes that now there are consequences and you have made that choice. And the way it's set up means there's some ugly stuff that's going to happen. The world has been broken. But the last thing God does before they go out into that world is what? God clothes them, puts skins upon them. And for me, that is such a mothering kind of love. Think about any parent who looks at a child knowing that they're going to go out into the world, right? Out into public school or school, big kids school, right? For the first time. And you know that not every day is going to be the best day. 
Not every day is going to be an easy day. Not every kid that your kid comes in contact with is going to be nice. And so you put that new jacket or shirt on them and you put those new shoes on them and you give them a backpack and you put a note in their lunch reminding them that you love them and you send them out to be who it is that they are going to be in the world because you love them enough to want to protect them, to want to give them everything you can, but also to let them be who they're going to be. That's excessive love to love without rules and to love without saying, listen, I'm going to love you as long as you stay inside this box, as long as you do it my way, as long as you follow the rules. God does not love us that way. Christ dies for us while we are yet sinners. While we're yet sinners. That is an extravagant kind of love. That's the love we are called to live into every day. To take what God has given us, what Christ has given us, and turn around and figure out how to translate that into our actions, our activities, our way of being in the world. That people might come to know who Jesus is, who God is, through our love for them. And it's a love that needs to be physical and tangible, visible, experiential because to say I love you and draw a line or close a door is not ever ever going to be a believable kind of love we are called to open doors we are called to sit at the table with with everyone who comes into our path and here's the thing as I said I know it's easy to love a God who loves us. It's easy to love a Savior who gives us salvation and resurrection. But as I said in what my husband called a book-length email on Thursday, right? People are messy and confusing, and they're not always trustworthy, and they're different than we are, and they're going to make us uncomfortable. They're going to challenge us and scare us and test us. Imagine if Jesus had looked at God and said, oh, they're messy and scary. They're different than I am. They're complicated. Right? We're not called to draw lines and say, but not him, but not her, not them called just to try to open our arms and embrace and care for and nurture excessively so those around us. So here's what I want. What I want, and of course what I want is the most important thing, right? (laughs) What I want is for us to go out and celebrate the people who have made you feel that way. Celebrate the people who have poured love into and around your life. But don't stop there. What I want is that we come back next year knowing what it's like to intentionally, every day, make sure that we are pouring that kind of love into the people we encounter. The people who are sitting here in the pews, the people who are outside these doors, the people who are everywhere that you are in the next year. Love on them. Let them know what it's like to feel that kind of love so that everyone on Mother's Day next year knows what it's like to have experienced a mothering kind of love, unconditional, nurturing, and excessive. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn.
that mothering kind of love where she looks at me like, now, so I don't have to figure it out myself. It's great. There are so many people in our lives who love us the way that a mother should love us. And I know it doesn't always come from the people we hope it's going to come from, but it can come from any one of us, any given day, any hour. When there's someone in front of you, love them with that unconditional, nurturing, cherishing, excessive kind of love. So go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.